Mardi Gras Madness here at the bottom of the ninth. We're joined by student body president John Woodard to discuss everything happening in LSU sports. And Taylor Courette gets an exclusive interview with a local broadcasting legend. So get on the edge of your seat and put on your rally cap because it's the bottom of the ninth and it starts right now. Welcome to this Mardi Gras edition of the Bottom of the Ninth. I'm Alex Cheney. And I'm Patrick Clay. Thanks for tuning in. As they say, laissez les bon temps roulet. Let's get the show rolling. Rolling roulet, I, I love it. Starting things off, Paul Maneri and the Tigers talked to the media today after having a few days away from the range shortened loss against ULL. Still undefeated in nine inning games, right? The, the game could change any inning. It only takes one inning to score a couple runs, and we weren't down by much at all. So, uh, you know, just really we just got to, uh, you know, convince ourselves that we can win the game at any at any point in the game. ULL had a little bit of a more more sense of an urgency to play well early. Maybe they maybe their coach talked to them about the weather and the you know what, what might be coming in and they they did the job early. Undefeated in nine inning games. Hey if it works for Les Miles being undefeated in regulation in 07, it can work for Maneri. <laughs> Last night LSU basketball took on Texas AM at the PMAC. Sports Showtime reporter and bottom of the ninth favorite Josh Nix wraps up the game. The LSU Fighting Tigers responded in a very energetic way following his loss at Kentucky with a 68-49 win against Texas A&M at the PMAC. Leading the way was freshman Jarrell Martin who scored a game-high 20 points on 7 of 9 shooting, including 4 of 5 from beyond the arc. Somebody can step up and um, like I said, we all trust each, trust in each other and um, we're going to go up here and try to get a win. Freeze that he hit out there and uh, were able to get to the rim, made his foul shots as well uh, and defended out there on the perimeter. But I thought his patience uh, was really good tonight and picking his spots and it's, uh, you know, you find a guy like that and he's making shots and making plays but he didn't go shot hunting. Yeah, I thought he was patient and uh, was able to take what the defense gave him tonight. LSU has a daunting task ahead of them as they face the number one team in the nation, the Florida Gators, in Gainesville Saturday. If the Tigers hope to pull the upset, Jarrell Martin will have to continue his effective play on both ends of the floor. Reporting from the PMAC for Tiger TV, I'm Joshua Nix. LSU basketball plays its last home game of the season Saturday, March 8th against Georgia. Keeping things with the hardwood, the LSU women's basketball team hopes to break their losing streak as they take on number 10 Tennessee tonight in the PMAC. The Lady Tigers enter tonight's game losers of four straight, putting their postseason possibilities in jeopardy. On the other hand, the Lady Vols come into the PMAC, winners of eight of their last nine, but will look to avenge their 80-77 to loss to LSU in Knoxville last month. Earlier this week, Danielle Ballard discussed what the Tigers need to do to clinch the season sweep of the Vols. Tennessee really don't play defense, but they have some good players that can play defense, you know. Just as a team. They don't yeah, as a team, they don't play defense and you know you got to take where they're hard and that's in the middle. You can catch the rematch tonight at 8 o'clock on CST. Coming up, student government president John Wooder joins us on set to give us his insight into LSU sports. Stick around, bottom of the ninth, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. Now I'd like to welcome Student Government President John Woodard. John, thanks so much for coming on. Guys, thanks for having me. John, are you excited about Mardi Gras? You got your coach Oh, absolutely. Got to represent, just like you guys. I'm not going to get shown up on TV. <laughs> <laughs> so on to the first thing. Uh, LSU basketball kind of has an up and down season going on this year. Have you followed the team at all? Oh, talk about an up and down year. I mean, when we look at so many highs, so many lows, I'm not sure if you all went to the Kentucky game we had at home, the ice game. The ice dome. What, a, ice, ice what, game a, what an awesome game. And, um, and then just to have, you know, some disappointments. We haven't played well on the road. Um, we came close to beating Kentucky again. Um, so I'm looking, you know, forward to see what we can do the rest of the year. We got at Florida and Gainesville. I think we got an opportunity if we, if we sweep uh, the rest of the year, which is sure unlikely, um, 
you know, maybe we can get into the big dance. Uh, otherwise, we're going to have to do well in the SEC tournament. Yeah, we're going to have to probably win the tournament, sure. really, to give us a shot. At this rate. But you mentioned the woes on the road. But they did show up against Kentucky, and now they're taking on the number one team in the nation on the road. But Florida has had some close contests lately. Do you think LSU can get that momentum back up like they did against Kentucky on the road? I think, I think we match up well with Florida. I think we're athletic enough uh, to play with them. I think it's a matter of whether or not we can get some production out of Hickey again. And if we can play defense, um, Gainesville is a tough place to play. And we haven't proved ourselves on the road. But uh, after the way we played uh, in Lexington, I'm pretty confident we're at least going to give them a, a run for their money. Now, of course, with LSU basketball sort of struggling late season, baseball has really become sort of, sort of a, a focus point. Sure. Um, what, have you, what have you seen out of LSU baseball so far that you've liked? Um, we're going to have outstanding leadership from Bregman at shortstop, which is such a key piece to a, a World Series type of team that you need. We've got outstanding pitching. Our hitting has been pretty subpar, uh, a little lackluster thus far in the season, but expect that to improve too. Um, and UL, obviously, is a disappointing, you know, half loss, if you will. <laughs> loss. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> We're gonna use that I, lightly. I loss, but you know, they're they're a seasoned veteran club that, that came in ready to play. And I expect you know we'll rebound well. Well, coming in, you mentioned the College World Series. They were there last year. Maybe. Do you think that they have that in them to make a return trip? LSU, that is? Yes. Absolutely. I think we see a lot of similarities between our 2008 and 2009 teams as we do with last year and this year. I think, um, I think we'll get back. I think we're definitely one of the top two or three clubs in the SEC. And, and you know, historically, the top two or three clubs get into you know, Omaha. So we'll see. Well, John definitely knows his stuff about LSU sports, and I know he got Chancellor F. King to be in the sports a little bit. I think we have a picture of them doing Bugga Nation. Is it right there, yeah, man. There he, it is. Did he even know what he was doing? He had no idea. I was like, <laughs> well, you got to trust me on this one. You're about to be the most popular president in history. I was like, you got to throw it up. So he was like, all right, all right we'll man. <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, speaking of the football team and Bugga Nation, they just brought in this amazing recruiting class, maybe bouncing back after the whole five for five, two for five fiasco, but then close it out strong. Are you excited about the upcoming season? Oh, certainly. I think we had an outstanding close to the 2014 class. Uh, we're all already off to a great start for 2015, so our coaching staff has stepped it up. We're doing well on a national level, so really looking forward to seeing what we can do. All right, John, what are you doing this weekend for Mardi Gras? I'll be in New Orleans for a couple days, uh, behaving as always, of course, <laughs> but, uh, but we'll see. I'll be there for a couple days. I'm sure you guys hopefully, too. Hopefully we'll see you there. Yeah, hopefully. certainly. Thanks for coming on, John. Coming up next, our own Taylor Curret joins us at the desk to tell us about his interview with a Louisiana broadcasting legend. We'll be right back. Beads, basketball, and spilled beer. You gotta love New Orleans. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. We're now joined by Sports Showtime reporter and Jaguars enthusiast, Taylor Curette. You poor, poor soul. Uh, I don't know about that Jaguars part. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, for, thanks for having me on, guys. Uh, Taylor, we hear you got to meet some pretty special people last night. Yeah, um, at the basketball game, I bumped into uh, Tim Brando, longtime sports announcer and Shreveport native. He's had some experience with LSU basketball and was more than willing to discuss with us in this exclusive interview. And I'm here with alongside Tim Brando. Uh, what, what brings you to Baton Rouge, Tim? Well. This is sort of where it all began for me, Taylor. I, uh, I had the opportunity to begin my broadcasting career in television uh, at Channel 9 in Baton Rouge and uh, with Tiger Vision. You do remember that. You've yeah, heard of it, of I'm course, sure, yeah. calling LSU games, especially basketball when Dale Brown got his heyday going in the early 80s. And uh, actually, I came down to visit with Coach Brown. What do you think of this LSU squad if you had a chance to watch them over the course of this season? Yeah, I, listen, I think Johnny has recruited exceedingly well. They're a very young team. I think they're going to get a lot better in the next two to three years. They have managed to play very big in big games and then, because they're young, not validate those big wins when they've gone on the road uh, against teams that they might be better than. If they can get to 10 and 8, win three of their four remaining conference games, and then make a run in the SEC tournament to the finals, they can get into the NCAAs. Not going to lie, I'm pretty jealous here. That, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, he, he talked a lot about Dale Brown, and I think we have a photo oh, that yeah? maybe he tweeted. Uh, oh, yeah, it's a picture of him with Dale Brown, yeah. and he says, this court should be his. Yeah. Wow. Bold. Do you bold think comment. they should rename the court at the Maverick Center for I, Dale Brown? Honestly, I think you're going to see maybe in the next couple of years, them doing that. There's been a lot of analysts talking about it. Dick Vitale has gone on ESPN to talk about it. 
You're talking about a guy, Dale Brown, who, who, said, who took them to 13 NCAA tournaments, and they had only been to two prior to him being there. So he, he's a legend for the program. I think it's just a matter of time. Absolutely. Well, that's all for our show today. Thanks for tuning in to the bottom of the ninth on Tiger TV Sports Showtime. You can watch highlights and catch full episodes online at TigerTV.tv. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for the latest news. We're here on Campus Channel 75, Monday through Thursday from 6 to 6.15. Good job, Taylor. Big thanks to our guests, Taylor Corrett and John Woodard, for joining us on the set today. For Patrick Clay, I'm Alex Cheney. Thank you for watching The Bottom of the Night, and you stay classy, Baton Rouge. <laughs>